Hi everyone, Ms. Schlarman here, and today we are going to talk about art. Let's get to it. Andy Goldsworthy is an environmental artist. He currently lives in Scotland, and he uses his environment around him to create art. Notice the pattern and the repetition and the layout. Choosing colors in nature is a big part of creating, just like in the world we see this giant rock in a nest. It also has some like thought process and concept. The reflection in the water here really brings it to a full circle. These rocks with the crack down the middle, here we have that radiating circle. He uses that black hole in the middle for a lot of his projects. Notice the layering effect, manipulating the materials into what you want them to be. So a leaf out of leaves. Spirals is another common motif in his work. I love the arch because you know we're St. Louis. Look at how the rocks come together. Notice how this little area is filled in with the different colors and the sorting. So what we're gonna do is basically go hunt and find a little scavenger hunt and bring back some pieces that you find interesting. I love that moss piece that I found. Um, and then I went ahead and I'm adding in like a belt around it. And real quick, I'm voiceovering this because when I was outside filming, there was all the wind blowing and everything. It was really hard to hear as I was talking about finding the right rock for the head. So here I'm kind of feeling like that moss looked like a dress. And so now I'm I'm adding it in to make my little person here and I'm using different branches, different types to kind of put it together. And that's part of creativity is using what you have. How can you manipulate it? How can you change it around? Do you need to cut it? Do you need to shape it? Think about your surroundings. Um, another thing is I'm going to use a stick here for the legs, but I could use chalk too. So I could do a little bit of like maybe natural art or maybe I could add in some some chalk around it if you have it. Um, using this grass, at first I was going to do the arm and then I was like, oh wait, those look way too skinny. So switch it. I tried to bulk it up there and it just wasn't working. What did I end up doing? Let's see. Oh yeah, I went in and I just found a thicker branch. Not as thick as the legs, because proportionately your arms are skinnier. And I used scissors too, to kind of work with it. Um, you just want to like look around, see what you have. Sometimes nature already has like a calling. You look at it and you're like, oh, I could see that. What can I enhance to make it look more like that? And here, this is kind of like a little fairy person, but you could do a dinosaur. You could create um, a rainbow. It could be a clown. You could, I mean, you can almost do anything. You can make a still life out of it. That would be kind of fun. Like our last project, you could create like a, a vase and then put the flowers out of it. That'd be neat. Um, I really like the use of chalk when they do that, if you have it. If you also ever notice that you could take a rock and sometimes that creates like a white mark onto the to the concrete as well. Here I get some flowers there in her hand, a little bouquet that she's holding. And I'm stepping back and I was like, oh, pine cones. So I put them around. Now, when Andy Goldsworthy work, he works a little bit more conceptual. He's working more with pattern. He's working more with repetition. He's working with bigger concept, like organization in natural uh, world and they are there fractals and math and like trees and how you see them grow and the spiral the spiral is fascinating in a lot of environmental arts we can think of like uh, seashells and the, the spirals coming in from there um, notice here we took the little branches off a of boxwood and what we're doing is manipulating them so it doesn't look like branches anymore so the layering here and it's time consuming you look at it and you're like oh that's super simple but lining it up goes step by step little piece by little piece is takes a little more time than you think it would the other thing you need to think about is you know this is just temporary art it's not necessarily permanent so you create this image and then you're, you're kind of like, oh, I wanted to keep it. But then at the same time, it's environment and it, it's going to change and it's going to move through that. And that's kind of the beauty of it. Um, but 
today we live in a society that has cameras and photography and digital and all you have to do is take the picture of it and then you have it. So art has really evolved and changed, not from just looking at the actual piece of art, but also looking at the photography, because sometimes you take a picture of it and it looks totally different than what it does in real life. And sometimes that picture looks better than it did in real life. It can go back and forth. So as an artist, you have to think about how can I manipulate my camera to make this look even better? So that's one thing you need to think about. Look at these rocks here. So I went and I found these rocks, but before I start my spiral, I did a little pre-planning and I was like, I need to go from small to big. So I lined up the rocks first from size, from small to big, and then I am circling and making that spiral and continuing it out. So back to talking about photography. How you view your work is is just as important nowadays than as creating the art. So like I said, it can be meant to be uh, temporary and it's like quick and fast, um, you know, like a dry erase board. They draw real quick and then they erase it and start over. But it's usually because they documented it as they did it, which is a new form of art. So here we have the rocks going. Notice that my camera needs to scoot up a little bit. Um, we'll get there. So then I'm like, okay, let's add in the pine cones now. So here's like a variety of nature coming together in this spiral of life. Um, so your your imagery can be a found objects that are everyday things like a little fairy girl or a dinosaur or something recognizable like a f make a flower out of flowers um, or it could be very abstract looking more at like the patterns and the spirals and the repetition and the layering and the over and over and here we'll put a little flower right there in the center all right I'm going to show you if you it happens to be rainy the day you decide to do this project found object sculptures are amazing found objects. Okay, so let's say I'm, it's raining outside. I'm not going outside. And I noticed that in the cupboard, my mom's got a whole bunch of little toothpicks for appetizers. Well, I'm going to use that, turn it into something. So you can kind of like put them together. Oh, I could make a whole bunch of stick people, couldn't I? You can cut them shorter. You can take them longer. You can make all kinds of things with them. Um, let's say you just have any old thing that you have around, think creatively in what you can turn that into. Okay, so like maybe I'm making um, a umbrella here, or uh, I don't know, I can almost turn this into almost anything, couldn't I? Let's just work with this. And then, you know what, maybe I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna add some drawings, kind of like how we did our germ art, you know? add in a little bit of mystery to it. Also how they do like the chalk drawings and stuff. Maybe this, maybe it's a, here's a stick and hmm, maybe it's a, oh, I know. Maybe it's a person holding a torch. I don't know what my person's doing here. His legs like kicked out, I don't know. He's a little crazy, isn't he? Okay, oh, that's kind of fun. Um, maybe, you know, don't be, you can break a toothpick and maybe it goes like this. And what could that turn into? Maybe if we had another one going down this way. Maybe, maybe it's just one. I don't know. And maybe I'm turning it into a house. There we go. Maybe I need to break more and put in there. Put a little window, a little window. So basically it's just take your mind and think creatively. It could be something as simple as just one toothpick. What could you turn one toothpick into as you're working? You know, kind of, kind of go through and, you know, think about it. Toothpicks are typically straight. So what happens if we were to maybe um, bend one or break it or manipulate it differently? Maybe I'm going to take this one and it's going to enhance it. And maybe it's a snake ah! or a little worm. I don't know. Kind of come up with different things. Be creative. Let it, let it 
your mind just kind of brainstorm whatever it will be it will be do you know what day may 10th is oh i heard someone say it they said it's mother's day so if you have some extra time this week i would highly suggest to gathering whatever materials you can find and making a mother's day card or a card for someone special in your life um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you real quick how to create a pop out heart. So first of all, fold it in half because we're going to work with symmetry and you know how much I love symmetry. Then with a pencil, I want you to try to draw just half the side of the heart and then kind of work with it. This is going to be the back. So if you mess up, there's no big deal. Then you're going to erase a little bit of this now. So you can see this better. I'm going to use a Sharpie. You do not need to use a Sharpie because then it might show through when you cut it out. And if you don't have pink and purple paper, that's fine. Use blank paper, color it, and you don't even have to do this design. You could just rig a card that says, Happy Mother's Day, I love you. That's all they, just something sweet. So here I'm going half, don't cut that, okay? Then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna cut this. Now notice the heart has to be drawn on the folded side. Okay, so this is the folded, this is the open, okay? So when I open it, I see a heart. Now what I wanna do is I wanna reverse this and fold it the other way so it wants to pop out. And then once that's popped out, you wanna fold this over here. So pop that all the way out. And if you guys think back to when we did the um, Van Gogh's chair, it's kind of that idea that we did. All right, so here we have the pop out. All right, and then now on here, I folded it in half. So I have a line of symmetry to guide myself. And I'm always going to put glue on the smaller side of the page. So I'm gonna take it around and I'm just gonna put the glue. I don't need a lot. Drag it just a little bit, okay? Then I'm gonna put, turn it over very carefully so I don't smush all of it. Line up the lines of symmetry. Now, some of you might be saying, you know, Ms. Schlarman, if you're gonna write something on there, it's a lot easier to write it before you glue it. And that's when I'm gonna say, you are absolutely right. So in hindsight, I probably should have done all my drawing before I did my gluing. But moving forward, it's okay. Happy mistakes, they happen all the time. So if you want to, you can go ahead and color using crayons. And then I love you, put my name. And then of course I can write over here, love, okay, and then write well, you guys, I don't know if you know my real name, but it's D-U-E-N-N-E. -E. This is my grandmother's maiden name. So I'm going to give that to my mommy. And so I make sure this gets folded out. Okay. So then it's like, Woo, I love you. Isn't that cute? Okay. So now here, I probably need to do some more decorating. And then maybe made with love, bye, and put your name. All right, everyone. Have a great day and happy Mother's Day. I love you.